Hi everyone, and welcome to your daily devotional for Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. It is a joy to be with you again today. Our prayers today come from a resource called Let Us Pray, Reformed Prayers for Christian Worship. It's a publication of Geneva Press, and I hope these prayers will be meaningful to you today. Take a moment to center yourself, and let us prepare to be in God's presence. We begin by turning to Psalm 99, and this reading and all of the readings today come from the Common English Bible Translation. Listen now for God's word to us. The Lord rules. The nations shake. He sits enthroned on the winged heavenly creatures. The earth quakes. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them thank your great and awesome name. He is holy. Strong king who loves justice, you are the one who established what is fair. You worked justice and righteousness in Jacob. Magnify the Lord our God. Bow low at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel, too, among those who called on his name. They cried out to the Lord, and he himself answered them. He spoke to them from a pillar of cloud. They kept the laws and the rules God gave to them. Lord, our God, you answered them. To them you were a God who forgives, but also the one who avenged their wrong deeds. Magnify the Lord our God, bow low at his holy mountain, because the Lord our God is holy. Let us pray. Forgive us, good Lord, for what we have waited to do until it was too late, for what we mistakenly did before we thought twice. For what we were able to do because we ceased to see others as persons. For what we were unable to do because we failed to see our own possibilities. For what we pretended we could control when we should have stood in awe. For what we feared which should have been belittled and overcome. Make us new so that we may begin anew. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 54 through 65. Listen again for God's word. As soon as Solomon finished praying and making these requests to the Lord, he got up from the Lord's altar where he had been kneeling with his hands spread out to heaven. He stood up and blessed the whole Israelite assembly in a loud voice. May the Lord be blessed. He has given rest to his people Israel just as he promised. He hasn't neglected any part of the good promise he made through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us just as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave or abandon us. May he draw our hearts to him to walk in all his ways and observe his commands, his laws, and his judgments that he gave to our ancestors. And may these words of mine that I have cried out before the Lord remain near to the Lord our God day and night, so that he may do right by his servant and his people Israel for each day's need, and so that all the earth's people may know that the Lord is God. There is no other God. Now may you be committed to the Lord our God with all your heart by following his laws and observing his commands just as you are doing right now. Then the king and all Israel with him sacrificed to the Lord. Solomon offered well-being sacrifices to the Lord, 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep, when the king and all Israel dedicated the Lord's temple. On that day, the king made holy in the middle of the courtyard in front of the Lord's temple. He had to offer the entirely burned offerings, 
grain offerings and the fat of the well-being sacrifices there because the bronze altar that was in the Lord's presence was too small to contain the entirely burned offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat of the well-being offerings. At that time, Solomon, together with all Israel, held a celebration. It was a large assembly from Lebo Hamath to the border of Egypt. They celebrated for seven days and then for another seven days in the presence of the Lord our God, 14 days in all. After praying to God, Solomon blessed the people and then they had a big celebration. In this time when we can't join together physically, what does it look like to celebrate as a community? Our New Testament reading today comes from the Gospel according to John. We'll be reading chapter 3, verses 31 through 36. Listen for God's word. The one who comes from above is above all things. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all things. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever accepts his testimony confirms that God is true. The one whom God sent speaks God's words because God gives the Spirit generously. The Father loves the Son and gives everything into his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever doesn't believe in the Son won't see life, but the angry judgment of God remains on them. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Here the author says that people have a difficult time accepting the testimony of the one who comes from above. Why do you think that is? Let us pray. God, when we are anxious, speak to us a word of peace. When we are bewildered about which way to go, speak to us a word of direction. When we wonder about the meaning of life, grant us wisdom and enough light to see one step ahead. We are dependent upon you. Open our eyes that we might see glimpses of the truth that you have for us. Where we are wrong, correct us. Where we are right, confirm us but give us a sense of adventure and the joy of the journey. Amen. Friends, may the God of peace fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Take care of yourself. Get some rest. I'll see you tomorrow.